We have some chain link that needs to go from right here all the way down to right here. Our chain link that we have for this job is eight foot tall. The difficult thing in this is that we can't bring the chain link up here and then trim it to the top rail. We have to trim everything outside of the building or on the ground here and cut it to fit that space. So we're gonna show you how we are going to do that. We already know that this is eight feet, so we don't need to measure that. So what we need to know is we need to know the other side. So right here we are 36 inches tall, so three feet. Now we need to know how long of a run we have. We have 141, which is 11 foot nine. We need to take some of that off so we can allow for the stretch of chain link. So we're gonna take off three inches. So now that we have our measurements, let's go outside. Because I don't want to, uh, oh yeah, there's another fun fact. We're on the second story and I don't wanna carry a 50 foot roll of chain link up here and there's not a working elevator. So we're gonna go downstairs outside we're gonna cut our chain, chain link out there and bring it back up. We took some of our chain link off the roll. We rolled it out flat. We're gonna go ahead and pull our measurement. We apologize for the wind. We can't predict the weather. We can't control the weather. So we're gonna go ahead and pull our measurement and cut it to cut it to length first. What did we say? 137, right? We're gonna rest the bottom up against a flat existing surface so that, that way we know it's gonna stay flat and true and we can figure out how to angle cut it. So we know the building's flat, we know the building's true and straight, and we know it's not going anywhere. So we're gonna pull our bottom nice and tight and push it to the building. We're, what we're doing is we're treating the edge of the building like the top of the floor. So our chain link needs to go from eight foot tall to three foot tall. So we're gonna go ahead and drive a stake right here We're gonna drive our next stake at three feet. And we're gonna go ahead and hook this string from this stake. We're gonna tie it to that stake. This is gonna then give us a line that we can trace to go across the chain link and cut it to its diagonal height. We're gonna use nippets to cut this to length. And cutting it by hand is super easy with nippets. Like it's so easy. A toddler couldn't do it, but you can. If you want a pair of nippets, or if you're looking for a pair of nippets and you want to try them out for yourself, see the link below. Cuts like butter. We want to make sure and cut above our line. We want to give ourselves enough to knuckle back to itself. So you just to envision that. That's the one that I just cut. So now we're going to go ahead and cut this one right here. So now those two are gone, and that one's going to get knuckled back to itself. So now we're gonna cut this one here, and instead of going across, we're gonna jump up one. So we're gonna cut here. So right there, we went one, two, three, up one, and we'll go one, two, up one. The goal is to try to keep all of our diamonds. We're trying to keep as much of this above the string line as possible, so that, that way we're treating this like our top rail. So we're gonna knuckle that back. If we cut there, that's not going to be long enough. So this one is actually going to get cut. That one's going to get cut right there. And then we're going to jump back up one again. So we're going to cut that one, cut that one, cut that one, and jump up. So we're going to go right there. We'd love to cut this one right here. If we cut it here, what's going to happen is we're going to have that Lone Ranger all by itself. So it would just be knuckled back to itself and ultimately what you're gonna do is you're gonna trim it back down. So that's why I cut it in there. We're going back up here and jumping up. The good majority of our cut is gonna be past our string line. Cut there. Nice thing about using the nippets is you can see exactly where you're gonna be cutting so you don't have to guess and it's really easy to make sure that you're cutting in the center of the diamond so that you can make your knuckles look uniform.
All right, so now we gotta go ahead and re-knuckle all that stuff that we just cut so that that way you don't have any sharp edges, you're not gonna cut yourself, and it's not gonna cut the insulation up in the attic where we're gonna put this. So to do that, it's gonna take a long time with a pair of nines, but we're gonna use this handy tool. It's a knuckler. It is a tool designed to put the knuckle back in the chain link, and you just take it and twist. Take it and twist. We're gonna show you how to use it, and if you think this might help you, make sure and see the link below. It does work a little bit better when you put a little bit of tension on the chain link. What you do is you just insert the chain link in there and then fold it back to itself. Just like that. It's not windy. Wind? No. no wind. No. <laughs> Just like that, it took no time at all. The best thing that we figured out after we started doing that was to take our legs and put a little, stretch that chain link with our feet and then do our magic with the knuckling tool. Then we're trying to hold it with one hand and knuckle it back. You live, you learn. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we have one of our eight foot tension bars already in place. We have a three foot tension bar. We're gonna insert that into the chain link. Then we're gonna slide the chain link into place because once the chain link's in place, we can't then put our tension bars in, so we have to do it now. Okay, you ready? Yeah, right there, boo. There's a beam in my way, there's a cable in my way. A little difficult, a little frustrating, but we're getting there. Oh, as much fun as that was. It's really not bad. Well, once we lift it up, it's not as tight as it should be. So now that we see that it's not tight enough, we're actually gonna go ahead and take out one straw. One off there. These are a pretty popular stretching device. They save you a lot of time. If you're looking for something like that, make sure and see the link below. Okay, now it comes down to the question. How well does this all work out? Does it hold tension? Or is it just all sorts of loosey-goosey? Let's find out. I can get just a little bit at the top, as to be expected because it is angle cut. I can't get anything out of the bottom. So overall, it's actually really tight. Now, if you wanna make it this easy for yourself, see the link below. Stick ties are overrated. They belong in the 90s. The last thing we have to do is we just need to go ahead and hog ring the tension wire to the fence. If you're looking for some hog ring pliers, some good ones, make sure and see the link below. That's it, that's how simple it is. Okay, so it's not very simple. It does take a lot of work. Now, if you wanna see how to bias cut your chain link, make sure and see that video right here. And if you wanna see how to install commercial grade chain link, make sure and see that video, which is right here. If you guys are looking for any sort of chain link fittings, anything that we showed you throughout the video, everything that we used, we have listed on our website. Stand with SWI, we are Wyoming's Fence Company, and you have a good dang day.